All right, let's dive into lab four, the builder and factory method design patterns. Um, so we'll be looking at these two design patterns for this lab. The builder design pattern is used to build and construct a complex object in a step-by-step -step approach. This is especially helpful when we have a collection of um, parameters uh, some of which are required and um, some of which are optional, right? So instead of using constructor overloading or telescoping constructor, um, that means we use multiple constructors and we pass default values um, for the um, uh, optional parameters. We're going to be use, we're going to be using the builder design pattern, and um, uh, we're going to see how chaining is used in this design pattern, right? So uh, we will be also looking at the factory method design pattern. Um, so this is another creation of design patterns. It's a really simple design patterns that deals with the problem of creating objects without having to specify the exact class of the object that will be created, right? So we'll be looking at these two design patterns, builder and factory method. So let's look at the requirements. Um, so the requirements for this lab, um, Java, JDK 8 or above, um, um, this is going to be a Maven project, so we'll be using IntelliJ IDEA because it works nicely with Maven. And um, um, this is it, right? We're going to be using JUnit for testing just like other labs. So click on the um, um, deliverable and submission links and accept the assignment on GitHub Classroom. So I'm going to accept the assignment. Um, and then um, reload the page to see the link to your repo, right? So this is the link to my private repository. Um, and then I'm going to be cloning the project into my desktop, right? So get clone and then paste the URL. And now it should download the project into my home directory, right? So let's go um, to the lab four and CD there. And now we're there. Now we need to open it in IntelliJ IDEA. Um, so I have to point IntelliJ IDEA to the folder that um, uh, that I cloned my repo to. Um, so I'm going to be opening um, IntelliJ IDEA. Um, let's see. So here is an IntelliJ idea. I'm pointing to the directory where I cloned the repository. And now I'm opening it as a Maven project in my IntelliJ idea, right? So checking the JDK version is 1.8, making sure that your IDE is set to this version. Um, so um, XML shows 1.8. Let's look at the source. Um, we have the, all the classes and we have the two test unit test files classes, right? So, um, so let's go to the lab description. Let's go back um, and look at the scenario, right? Um, so we're going to be building this using builder and factory methods. So the problem statement. So we've got a developer working on a game that features characters from the famous the famous novel, The Lord of the Rings. And she's working on a feature that allows users to create avatar that reflect and represent the characters in the novel, right? So this is uh, creating an avatar is a step-by-step -step process. Um, so this is inspired by the process of creating an avatar in Snapchat, where you add a skin tone and then you go add more features, hair, uh, mustaches and so on right so we're going to look at these three characters uh, from the novel and then we will be creating um, uh, three um, uh, avatars for these um, characters right the knight and the archer and the flag bearer right so um, each avatar will consist of a set of optional um, uh, or, um, things to customize like skin tone, hair color, uh, hair type, body type, facial features, and then we'll pick these 
uh, avatars for these um, characters, right? So we start um, by looking at the codes. Here we've got an interface for the characters. It's right here. Um, so it has a, a getter for the name um, and setter for the avatar, right? And then we've got the actual avatars, um, uh, sorry, the actual characters that will be implementing um, um, this interface, right? So we've got a flag bearer that will implement the characters um, interface, so this is the flag bearer, and these are the default for each one of these avatars, right? Uh, so the flag bearer will implement the characters, um, and will hold the reference to the name and an avatar object. If the name is not provided, we're going to throw an illegal argument exception. So we set the name here, and then we set the avatar. So pay attention here, because um, um, this is how we set the avatar in the character. So we call the avatar object, and then we pass a skin tone, hair, ta hair type, hair color, body type, and facial features, right? And we have a bunch of setters and getters for each one of these. Um, so this is for the archer. Um, um, so we implement characters, and we even set the avatar in the constructor in the same way, right? Um, this is for the knight. Um, and implements the characters, and we also set it in the constructor, right? Um, and then we have the um, uh, things that we need to set for this knight avatar, right? So next we create a set of enums uh, for skin tones, hair types, hair colors, body types. So enums are, uh, think of them as um, um, class, special class that represent a group of constants. Um, um, so these constants are just like final variables. Um, um, so um, each um, feature um, inside our um, avatar will be represented in an enum. Right. So next, uh, she wrote the initial implementation of the avatar class, um, uh, in which she used constructor overloading for the avatar class where one constructor contains a set of required parameters and another one with one optional parameter and a third with two optional parameters and so on, right? Um, so this is what we call constructor telescoping. So here you have the avatar, hold the reference to all these enums, and here's the default uh, constructor, right? So we've got one, two, th uh, one, two, three, four optional parameters, skin tone is required, and then another constructor with the required skin tone and one optional parameter, hair type, and then uh, we set it, we call the default constructor. So this refers to the default constructor in avatar, right? So we do um, uh, pass default values for the things that we do not get in this constructor, the optional ones, and uh, here's another constructor. This is another constructor overloading with one required and two optional um, uh, parameters, uh, hair type and hair, uh, and hair color. So we set those, we customize those, and then we pass default values for the body type and facial features by calling the default constructor, right? So, um, um, so this is how you, you keep adding c constructor overloadings. Um, so as you see, this will turn into a problem. Um, and so here we have one another constructor with one required and three optionals, and then here we have one constructor um, with one optional parameter that we pass it, a uh, body type, but we pass defaults for the hair type and hair color, right? So we set the body type, and then we pass default for facial features, right? And we keep adding these overloading um, um, constructor overloadings, right? Um, so the one that we rely on is the default constructor, and we those um, um, other constructors will call the default constructors. And we here we have a bunch of getter um, um, to return these uh, features in our avatar. And then we have a two string method, uh, and here we're using the string builder, and this is also built on the builder design um, uh, pattern. So um, this implementation is problematic. 
um, uh, this is what we call telescoping constructor pattern, um, where you have this um, uh, constructor um, that contains a list of um, uh, required parameters, right? And we have another one with optional parameters and a third one with two optional parameters and so on and so on, right? Um, so here is the one that is default constructor with all the optionals. Um, and then we declare more um, constructors to customize the creation of the avatar, right? So um, this is really problematic. So here we you see this one, um, the avatar contains skin tone and hair type. And then for the rest, we're passing default parameters. So we call the, the, um, the constructor in line nine um, using the this keyword. And we pass all the parameters, but only specifying the one that was supplied to us. And the rest will pass default values for them, right? So clients will have a really hard time keeping track of these defaults and keeping track of the order. If we change the order of parameters, um, then we break the implementation of clients, right? And clients, they also have no way of knowing the defaults, right? Um, they have to check the documentation or something to know the default um, uh, values, right? And how to pass them. Um, so we don't want to use this um, um, long list. Uh, this is will not scale. You will keep adding more parameters to the constructor as you add more features, All right? So if I want to add eyeglasses, I have to add another one, and another constructor, and you will be ending. Uh, you will end up with a long list of uh, parameters and constructors right because you have to keep adding constructors for these optional features right so that's the problem of working with constructor overloading um, uh, and telescoping constructors right um, so we're going to look at how to um, solve this problem using the uh, similar way that you see here in the to string method we use the string builder to build a, a, a custom message, a custom string. So you're going to use something similar with the builder design patterns to um, construct the avatar in a step-by-step -step manner, right? So um, um, again, um, uh, let's look at the questions, right? Um, so we're going to look at the questions here. Uh, so we're going to fix the current implementation of the avatar class using the builder design pattern. And we want to remove the constructors overloading. All right, we don't want to have this telescoping constructor. Um, so let's take a look at this, right? So they want us to remove, uh, go to the avatar class and fix this problem, right? Right here, right? We don't want to have those. Um, um, telescoping constructor. Um, we don't want to have those overloading um, constructors, right? Constructors overloadings are not nice. All right. So, and then we will also use the um, um, uh, factory method in the character factory class. Um, so we're gonna have a factory method that creates an avatar by its character type. So you give me the character type or name, um, and you assign a name to the character. Um, and then we will call uh, or create the, the right concrete type of the avatar class, right? Whether it's knight or flag bearer or archer, all right? So um, this is the question. So let's dive into the code. So we go to the avatar class and um, we can see this constructor, right? And these are the um, uh, other constructors that they contain the optional parameters, right? So we're going to delete those um, um, constructors, right? And the default one, uh, we want to also delete those and we want to pass a builder, right? So we do want to 
um, um, leave the process of instantiating an object to the avatar class we're going to move it into an uh, in your class called a builder so we'll create a class inside the avatar so let's remove this and let's name it builder right so here this is uh, we don't want to uh, we don't want to have this to be public so we're going to have it private um, um, so builder um, pass a builder to the constructor um, and then we need to create the builder class right so when we get the builder object we're going to set all these um, um, instance variables right the fields for this the avatar class so all the feature this the skin tone we're going to be getting it from the builder object right so builder dot skin tone right and we do the same for all the um, uh, features right the um, parameters um, sorry the instance variables right so all these instance variables hair color hair type body type we want to pass um, uh, pass it in the builder right so um, so I'm going to be uh, creating an inner class all right so let's create an inner class so public static class we want this class to be static so that way we can call it avatar dot builder right uh, so public static class builder and then we want to add all the um, uh, properties that make up an avatar right so we want to make the skin tone final because you can change it it's the only one that's required the remainings are optional so we'll we're going to make them um, non-final right if you make something final you have to set it in the constructor so we'll make sure that skin tone is set inside the constructor of the builder right so let me add more um, hair type hair color and else body type um, so we set body type here and um, facial features and then we need to set this in the constructor right so make a constructor for the builder with remember skin tone is the only required uh, property right the list are optional so builder skin tone and then we call this the skin tone uh, we're going to check first if they are not passed um, we're going to throw an exception right um, so if I'm getting null I'm going to throw a legal argument exception and give it a message right so a skin tone is required all right um, is required to create an avatar all right um, and then uh, we want to set the skin tone so this the skin tone equal skin tone right so now you can see the error for the uh, final right don't worry about the other errors we'll fix them as we move on so now we have the constructor for our builder next is we need to add setters right and our setters are going to be special right because we all used to having a setter with void this time the setter will have um, a builder data type right because we want to return something so that way we can use chaining dot 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 right so you can get a setter for these one two three four um, properties um, so we're going to name them with hair type right uh, I just like to use the name with because it um, reminds me that this is going to return something instead of set right set often is void so we set the hair type here this is hair type equal hair type and then we want to return this right the this represents the instance of the builder right 
So we turn the instance of the builder. And then we do the same for um, hair color, right? So public builder with hair color, takes a hair color, set it and return myself, right? So this the hair color equals hair color and then return this. All right, so we'll do the same for um, the body type. So with body type, takes a body type and then set it and then return this, right? Really returning this is what allows us to use chaining. So that way we can call dot with hair color. We pass a hair color and then we keep calling dot with body type and then we pass a body type and so on, right? If you don't return this, you will not be able to use chaining. All right, we can call multiple methods in a single statement. All right, so let's do the last one for the facial features. Um, so builder. With facial features. And then we set it, and then we return this. All right? So now we should have set all the attributes. Now we need to create a special method that is going to create the object, right? So this should return the avatar, and the method names is build, right? And this is what we'll call the private avatar constructor, right? And so this re will return new avatar, and then we pass ourselves as the builder, right? We were able to see the avatar because builder is an inner class. It's a class inside the avatar. So that way, we were able to see the avatar constructor and call it using the new avatar, right? Um, so, um, here we can continue setting the uh, remaining properties that's coming from the builder. Um, so we can keep setting the uh, remaining ones, right? So hair type, hair color, body type, and facial features are all coming from the builder. So we'll set them here. So that's for the hair type. And that's for the hair color. And next is the body type. And then finally the, fi the facial features. Right, so we're done with setting our constructor. All right, so we made it private and we added an in your class. The in your class, the builder class, is able to see this private constructor and call it using new inside a build method. Right, um, so um, uh, these problems don't worry about them. We're going to look at the uh, root cause of these problems um, uh, you see there was a var for the string builder that's Java 10 and above so I will change that to uh, remove var because that's not in Java 10 so uh, if you look at the archer class now we, we don't have access to the avatar class so if we go to our avatars the concrete avatars so we can't call new avatar right because you can't see it, it's private. It has to be done through the builder, right? So we say this that avatar equals a new avatar. We can't call new avatar, right? So we have to call the in your class, right? So avatar dot builder. So now we're able to go inside the constructor of our avatar builder. 
So when we call new avatar that builder, we are inside the constructor of the builder class, right? It's static, so we had to call it avatar that builder. And now we are here. So we need to pass a skin tone only. And then we call dot width dot width dot width to set the remaining um, properties, right? So let's pass the skin tone, right? Uh, so for the archer, uh, the skin tone is fair. And then we keep adding dot, right? To set the remaining hair type. So dot with hair type and it's long straight. So we call this from the enum. And then we do dot with hair color. And the hair color is blonde. So hair color dot blonde, right? And then we do the body type. So dot width body type. Remember we're able to call dot width dot width because of each sitter is returning this. So it's returning the instance that we're creating here in line 14, right? So we can keep calling a method after a method in a single Java statement, right? It's really beautiful. So with facial features, we set it. And then at the end, the object was not created. So avatar was not created until we call build, right? Remember? So this is will retain a builder. It's not going to retain um, an avatar until you call build, right? So up till the, this moment, we're getting a builder object. But when we call build, we'll get an avatar object, right? So we can set it using this dot avatar. Right, so we call dot build and the arrow should disappear. Right, cool. So now we created our avatar um, for the for this character, the archer. Right, so um, so each one of these is retaining this, as I said, um, and if we go to our description the description of the lab so we're going to do the same for the knight and flag bearer with these same values right so let's go to the flag bearer and then do this dot avatar equal new so we can call the avatar dot um, builder so we need to add new and then we need to pass um, the required one. So the required is skin tone, right? And then we need to call these custom setters dot with dot with for the remaining features, right? So with hair type, passing a hair type, and then dot with hair color, and then we're passing the hair color for this um, character and then we're passing the body type and next we do the facial features and then finally we need to create, we can do this because this will retain a builder. So we have to call dot build to return an instance of the avatar class, 
right? So we did this now for um, the flag bearer, right? We need to go to the night. This dot avatar committed out so we can see the default values and then we do this dot avatar equals new avatar dot builder the static class and then we pass the required parameter skin tone remember we can pass null so we get an illegal exception so let's pass the default and the skin tone medium and then we call dot with hair type and then we pass the default the correct values for this um, feature right so we do the hair color and it's black and then we continue with the body type and facial features right and at the end we have to call the dot build so we can get an avatar object instead of a builder object right so let's take a look at this, right? So now we're done. The implementation looks good to me. Um, so this is our uh, avatar constructor and it's a private and it takes a builder and it sets its own properties using the builder's properties, right? Um, so um, this is the string builder. Um, uh, this should be fixed in the lab. I'll fix this in the lab. This shouldn't be var. It should be declared because we're using Java 1.8. Um, you don't need to fix this, but I, I will fix it here. So made a string builder. Uh, this was initially made for Java 10 and above, but then I lowered it to 8. So I had to remove var. So all right, so we go to the main class now. We can see that we have the night object. It takes a name of our character, and then um, it will print out the two string for this um, character. All right. So, um, so now we can see that this is calling the constructor. The constructor will seek for a name, and then it will create an avatar right for this character right and then we call the to string method the, con the to string method will print out the details for this um, character and its corresponding avatar so our implementation for the builder design pattern looks uh, quite similar to the string builder right so, yeah, so this is the string builder in the standard java library and it looks similar to that all right, so let's see uh, our main uh, program and run it. So run the main program. And it worked, right? So uh, exit with code zero, that means no error. We printed out the um, information for our avatars, right? And the characters. All right, um, so, um, so that's how you implement the um, avatar in uh, the builder design uh, pattern. Um, so this is what our implementation looks like. Now we have a constructor that takes a builder and the builder is an in-year class um, inside uh, static um, uh, nested class inside the avatar class. Um, and it holds reference to the um, uh, attributes uh, of the avatar and it has a bunch of setters that they return the instance of the builder um, class, right? 
uh, and the build method will call the private avatar constructor passing this instance of the builder class all right um, so uh, we're gonna look at these problems uh, most likely in the test um, so let me see um, all right so I'm gonna look at those uh, so let's let's just take a look at our test run the test and see if our tests are passing all right um, so um, this is the build so let me see um, um, what is left before we run the test and see the second question um, so the second question uh, so we've done the first one implementing the avatar uh, using the builder design pattern the second question is um, uh, so this is the first question uh, we did implement this using the builder design pattern um, so that's the build method and these are the setters right um, so this is the uh, second question um, uh, where we ask to implement the factory method inside the character factory so let's go back to the project and inside the project um, we wanted to implement this factory method All right so um, um, it takes a character type and takes a name of for the character um, so we're gonna check if the character type is passed to us um, so this is a required uh, parameter so if we receive the argument um, um, if we do not receive it we're gonna throw an exception so check if the name is null or the name trimming and removing the trailing leading white spaces is empty um, then we're going to throw an illegal argument exception All right um, so throw that exception uh, since name is required um, uh, so a character must have a name All right and then we want to iterate over the type right so you can use switch since this is an enum right so this is the nice thing about enums that we can use um, switch statements to iterate over the value of enum and um, those constants so use case for archer if that's the case that that's the type that we received then we return um, a new um, uh, archer object right so we give it a name um, and then it will create the correct avatar for this character all right so we do the same for the remaining um, character types uh, returning the correct object all right so the flag bearer and the knight and we return a new object knight pass a name and then if we if we do, if we get something else we want to throw an exception all right so default if we don't get any of those three we're throwing an exception all right um, so unknown character type all right so this looks good to me um, so we wrote this factory method um, and that will take a type that will take a type and a name and then returns um, an object of type character right um, of the, the same interface that they implement the same in interface characters right um, so um, so this will do the uh, factory method design pattern and now we need to take a look at the test and run our tests right so um, this is lab for test before that I want to check this a smaller test unit test uh, the avatar test here we check um, if the skin tone is missing right we pass a no, uh, null to the skin tone then we should get an illegal argument exception 
if the character name is missing in the factory method then we should be also getting an exception so that will assert through um, that exception and here we're building a simple character um, hero and um, using the builder design pattern and then we will check if the if these are not null right so if we're getting the correct values for these characters from the getters right um, when we call it get skin tone get body all right um so let's run this guy um so avatar test is running let's hope for green checks all right so we got three green checks for all the three unit tests right so let's go to the next one lab for test this is a more involved unit test so checking for the um, correct implementation the correctness of the implementation so here we check the correct constructor parameter for the avatar so it should be private with one parameter of avatar builder type and here we're also checking for the avatar class should have a nested public static class called builder um, um, so this is what we're checking for so make sure your implementation has um, the same names right so here we're checking for the avatar builder class should have a set of setter methods whose name start with with and takes one parameter and retains the avatar builder class type right so it should be taking one parameter and it should return um, an avatar builder um, uh, class type all right so these are for the setters each method that starts with 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 right um, and then here we check the uh, build method inside the builder all right so it should have a build method called build that returns the avatar class type and takes no parameters uh, and here we're building an avatar using uh, method chaining um, so this is similar to the one you saw in the avatar test class um, so we're checking for these values and here we check for the factory method um, design pattern so check that the should have uh, factory method with the correct parameters um, two parameters character type and string and returns a character right that means the type characters um, interface and here the factory method should return an avatar for the given character type and name so if we give it archer it should return um, an object for us and here we're checking that we should not create an avatar with no name so we should get an illegal argument exception so let's run it and let's hope that we see green check marks and those unit is great right so all green that means um, that means our test is passing right uh, you can also run the test from the maven so the top right corner you click on maven and then click on live, uh, life cycles and then uh, select test and then run the test all right or double click on test um, so this will run the test um, cycle in maven and uh, it will build compile and build this is actually what will run in google uh, sorry in github uh, so 11 tests are passing in total so 8 in the lab for test and 3 in the avatar test uh, classes right so this is what github classroom and github uses to build and run the test and uh, grade your submission right uh, so it's always good to run this so let's um, uh, now commit so run git status to see to see the, those files that have been changed um, so we need to stage them, add them. So you run git add, we give it the source, and then we run git status. Um, now we see those files. Now we need to commit them. All right. Um, so commit completed lab four. And next we need to push it. All right. So git push to GitHub origin. The branch is main. So we push it. Um, so let me um, uh, grab uh, the browser um, to see that so let me just push it and then um, uh, I'm gonna head over to github.com um, go to the repositories and see the file 
So let's grab this one here. And now we can see the commit was pushed, completed lab four, right? So it's still building. Um, so let's go and see the details, see the auto grading. Um, so now uh, it's running and it's complete and it's green. Great, that means we got the full mark, right? So let's expand this auto grading and scroll all the way down and you can see that it's passed and we're getting 100 out of 100 right so that's how you do um, this lab builder and factory method and how you submit to github classroom thank you